Well, hello, and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bokor, your host for episode 76, here as we're getting into the frozen tundra that is the Great White North here in Canada and other parts of the country experiencing some good cold weather. Got some EV news to talk about today, so let me get right into it. Now, this first story always makes me really, really happy when I hear about mass adoption, especially in more fleet or commercial applications. And this is a story out of the U.S. uh, for uh, Virginia School District that's placing the largest electric school bus order uh, in North America to date so far. Uh, Dominion Energy has partnered with the Virginia School Districts uh, of replacing their diesel bus fleet with 100% electric school buses. And that's phenomenal for many, many reasons. These are Thomas-built buses, um, and they've been selected as the provider for all of the 50 initial buses that going, that they're going to go in into the first phase. They're go, supposed to go in the operation before the end of 2020, so let's hope they'll start in the fall school year, I would imagine. Um, and this will already be the largest deployment of electric school buses in the entire United States. Now, they want to continue to expand uh, the school board in electrifying their school bus fleet. They're going to do 200 um, school buses next year per year actually for the next five years uh, with a goal of reaching 50% of electric bus fleet or a thousand school buses by 2025, so a nice ambitious goal, and then reach 100% of electrifying their entire school bus fleet by 2030, so within the next 20 years. Uh, Great on them, that's excellent to see. You know, I I didn't know that less than 1% of the school buses in the United States are electric. Boy, that's uh, I actually thought it was a bit more. A couple of benefits from these school buses as well is that they do provide vehicle to grid technology, so you can harness power from the school buses when you need to. Now, biggest TCOs or biggest reasons for electrifying school buses and other commercial fleets. Number one, you got it, lower total cost of ownership, right? Reducing your operating and maintenance costs, which can be quite substantial on a school bus fleet, by as much as 60%. So some hard numbers there. Um, electrifying school bus provide the equivalent to about 17 miles per gallon if you were using fuel versus the, the normal of about six for diesel that school buses get. So that's amazing, almost tripling, uh, tripling that factor. And one bus will reduce uh, CO2 emissions by uh, 54,000 pounds per year and replacing over a thousand buses in five years with electric buses will reduce emissions by 810 million pounds. That's the equivalent of taking off 70,000 cars off the road. These are the kind of numbers, folks, that really make me excited about the EV revolution and the adoption of EV technologies, not just from us, from consumers, but for commercial and other applications. So uh, my congratulations to the Virginia School District, and I hope many more school districts, including those in the U.S., Canada, and around the world, will pick up on this. Now, here's a video piece that I'm going to uh, add into the show today of a a launch event that I went to earlier this week by Canadian Tire. Uh, They are uh, coming out to say that they're hosting one of the largest electric vehicle uh, fast charging networks in Canada. They've partnered with Electrified Canada. So here's a couple minutes of video from that event. All right, guys. Well, I'm here with Andrew Davies, uh, Senior Vice President for Canadian Tire Automotive. How are you, Andrew? Thank you. Good morning. Good Happy morning. to be here. Excellent. Thanks. A little chilly, as my fans know from the other interview. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me. And I just wanted to get your perspective on, on Canadian Tire's investment and partnership with uh, Electrify Canada. You know, why you guys are wanting to do this and where you see this going. Yeah, we're, we're very excited to be in partnership uh, with Electrify. Obviously, vehicle technology is changing. Canadian Tire has always helped Canadians get around this country for over 90 years. And we really see this as a next phase of helping to support our customers get around. Exactly. And for what Rob said, you know, there's a lot of uh, even rural locations. So there's a definitely urban push, but getting fast charging out to r- more rural locations. And I think that that's important where... Canadian Tire stores are can be you know kind of a center of that rural community and and I you know hopefully you guys see that as well. Yeah, we've played a we play a role across Canada and uh, again we've been around for over 90 years, building stores in rural communities and uh, trying to help Canadians even in small towns. In this case with the EV charging areas, again we'll talk about the locations of all those, but yeah we're going to be spread out across the country in communities that people may not think need an EV charging station, but we'll have super stations and charging stations from coast to coast in these small communities. That's excellent. And do you have a a number or target as far as how many stores in conjunction with with charging environments that you will roll out? Well, we we have got in plans 90 locations right now, which is uh, a very significant uh, investment. Uh, And as the EV um, community starts to evolve, 
we're going to keep looking at locations and considering where it makes sense to add to that. Um, any final comments about the partnership here and where you see that going? No, just a uh, great partner to work with Electrify. Canadian Tire is excited about having these partnerships and expanding. And, uh, you know, Canadians should watch for more to come because uh, this isn't the end of it. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. I appreciate your time and uh, uh, hosting this great event here in Toronto. Thank you. Well, hey, guys, I'm back here at another Electrify Canada event with COO Rob Barossa of Electrify Canada. How are you? Very good. Thank you very much. And I'm excited to be here at another opening event with Electrify Canada in partnership with Canadian Tire. Really excited about that. Rob, maybe you can tell me what that's all about. Sure. I mean, really what we're about is building that confidence and dependable charging network, right? And what other brand uh, better to do that with in Canadian Tire, right? Brings that confidence and dependability that we want our drivers to have and customers of Canadian Tire to have. Can you expand? I know we're, we'll have a media event in a little bit, so I'm catching you a little bright and early, but what can you tell me as far as the, the, the depth and the breadth of this network in conjunction with Canadian Tire? Right, so in our first phase of rollout, we're rolling out 32 stations across Canada. Tw over 20 of those stations will be at Canadian Tire stores. So we really, when we, when we entered the market, we really wanted to find the right partner to partner with, again, reliability and that confidence and what and and Canadian Tire is that brand so we're really excited to be rolling out with them they have convenient locations across the country uh, both in urban metro markets as well as rural areas uh, so they were they were great as as we're uh, rolling out across the country yeah you know that's a great point Rob because you know when you are looking at, at sites for for especially DC fast charging because you need some infrastructure there to begin with it's really hard to bring that in after the fact you've got these stores already that are intact that usually have pretty good abundance of power or and or reliable power I may add uh, I love the convenience factor because people can go into the entire shop around get windshield washer fluid because that's really all we need for EVs folks you guys know that maybe an air freshener or two so our first in our first phase are really focused on the highways so they're they're Rural, more of the rural markets and their locations uh, played in very well. But we're also building in the metros. In our next phase, we're going to look to do that more heavily. Uh, so again, they have the, the store location, so it's a great partnership to continue building into the future. Um, and then do you have some time frames of the next uh, Canadian Tires are going to be coming online, how that rollout happens? Yeah, so we already have another Canadian Tire store in Welland, uh, out by the Ni Niagara area. Uh, yep, And we have several more in construction uh, here in Ontario, as well as in, in BC. Uh, and also we're starting in, in Quebec. So uh, many more coming along. And so there's gonna be, it's going to be an exciting 2020, uh, and, and we're going to have a great network. Yeah, so I, I think keep keep an eye out for our uh, for our developments. Uh, download our app at Electrify Electrify Canada. Um, go to our website electrify-canada.com to to learn more about what we're doing, uh, and get updates as our more of our stations open up. Well, thank you very much for inviting me, and I look forward to plugging in later and getting a charge. Hey guys, I'm here with Louis Tremblay, the CEO and founder of Flow Canada. Thank you very much for taking the time. How are you, Louis? Oh, pretty right. good yourself. Excellent, excellent. Wanted to get a little bit more on camera for some of my viewers as far as Flow's uh, participation in this new launch here or this extended launch of the Electrify Canada and Canadian Tire participation. Yep. First, we have 25,000 charging stations. We already deployed 25 fast charger with Canadian Tire like two years ago, and we're adding more, uh, more charger now, 54 DCFCs and over uh, 55 uh, level two chargers. Wow, that, I mean, that's a big investment. A lot of folks don't know how much it costs to put level threes. I mean, level twos, you know, you can get away with, so you see them at parks and rec centers and things like this, but level threes are a substantial investment. Um, now, you guys, because you guys are a pioneer in the field here in Canada, you go back many, many years. Um, how, how are you seeing those investments uh, pan out so far? It's really depend on the, the region, but I would say a DCFC, the average will be between 100,000 and 150. And I, I've seen sites over 200. So it's, it's a big commitment. And hopefully you're starting to reap some of those rewards from those commitments, because as you mentioned in the, the kickoff, that it is, an, it is an infrastructure investment for the long term. And you're seeing, uh, so you're seeing the, the viability of these investments and looking at the long term, because uh, as somebody asked, you know, EV growth is still in the three percentile, you know, for Canada. How do you see that landscape changing over the next couple of years? Yeah, our goal is to accelerate the EV adoption, and of course it's a long-term investment. So we don't look at specific places. There's places that you can get a return on a charger, but our goal as a network provider is really to be able to cover the whole map. So being able to travel from Vancouver to Quebec 
it's nice, but it's not you know what we're really targeting. You can do that with the rollout we're doing, but really work on the densification of the city so people can commute and rely on charging, right? So, but it will take more time. But as we're getting more EV models for every people's need, we really will see from 2025 to 2030 a real, real big change in the uh, electric mobility. Thank you for taking the time. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Kyle. All right. So again, big congratulations to Electrify Canada and partnership with Canadian Tire for advancing the uh, Canada-wide charging networks once more. So some quick car news. Um, if you're in the market for an EV in 2020, the Chevy Bolt EV is a great bargoonie with a capital B. Um, Chevy is really being motivated to try to move some of these bolts uh, before the final phase out of the US, U.S. federal tax credit, which will sunset on April the 1st. So you've got this quarter, basically. So they're doing things like um, offering up to $10,000 off the MSRP, um, which starts at 37495 These are American U.S. numbers, including the 875 destination fee. So that's a pretty good starting price, uh, especially if they're offering up to 10000 bucks off that. And uh, apparently they have a ton of these in stock. I know I was driving around a couple of GM dealers here in the Toronto area and I saw some bolts on the on the lot outside and that's something I hadn't seen for quite some time. So there are some vehicles there. That $10,000 off breaks down to about an 8500 uh, discount uh, offer on all versions of the Bolt, um, whether it's coming from a, uh, you know an off GM lease or another a manufacturer, you can also get an additional fifteen hundred bucks, and that's then you add the tax credit on top of that, whatever you're you're eligible for, and then there could be other state and local incentives as well. So check your local listings, as they say on TV. Um, so depending on where you are, the Bolt can be a really really sweet deal. I think probably one of the sweetest deals you can find out there. Um, in that case, uh, there's some reports in the San Francisco Bay Area that dealerships are listing Bolt EVs as low as 169 a month for 36 months, uh, 230 bucks a month for uh, some other leases, um, 239 uh, from Car Cars Direct for 36 months. So there's definitely stuff happening. Now remember, the 2020 Bolt didn't really change that much over the 2019 model year. It got a bit of a boosted range with some tweaking that uh, GM did in the battery management system uh, and, and the cells in the battery pack. Charging is still the same at about 50 to 55 kilowatts that you could pull, but it does up the uh, EPA range to 259 miles versus 238. So your, of course, a mileage will uh, will be different based on your use cases. They've also added a few new colors, uh, which I, I've seen one on Twitter recently, which was pretty nice, and a new surround view camera system. So if you're in the market for a Bolt, run out and you live in the United States and you're interested in cashing in on that federal tax credit and uh, what else you may be applicable for, check around. I think you'll find the Bolt a great, great all-electric vehicle to get your feet wet into. Staying with GM, and this, this article is going to be really short, Hummer has come out and said that they may be looking to build an all-electric version of their Hummer. Um, one of the, in my opinion, one of the most pointless commercial vehicles to be built, uh, consumer vehicle, excuse me, to be built. Um, but anyway, that's my personal opinion. But this revival, uh, there's going to be potentially, uh, from what I'm reading, that there's going to be a, a commercial during the Super Bowl uh, that reveals the electric Hummer along with basketball star LeBron James. Good for them. Um, it looks like it's going to be under the brand name Hummer by GMC. No other information given other than they might start production at the end of 2021. Might is the operative word, so stay tuned for more info. Again, I'm not big on reporting on rumors. This has a bit more basis uh, from some of the sources that have commented on this, and I, I and I find no reason why GM would not try to push a, a version of the Hummer electrified since they're not doing much more with that vehicle. They might as well cash in a little bit while they can, and uh, you know certainly there's some great commercial use applications uh, because of its capabilities. Uh, so anyway, wait and see what happens, and uh, watch the Super Bowl to find out. I talked about CES in the last couple of shows, and Nissan, of course, came out with the Area Concept, which I believe I talked about briefly. Some more specs have come out from that. Um, uh, they are calling it a, an affordable Big Brother crossover to the LEAF, uh, this vehicle, uh, that it's going to be uh, 
based on uh, this concept, it should have a range of about 300 mile uh, US EPA with a zero to 60 in five seconds. It's a crossover design, and it's also going to be the one that debuts Nissan's uh, new E-Force twin motor all wheel drive system, which I believe I talked about or I've Twittered about. Um, pretty exciting that they're goofing around with four wheel drives now for electrified vehicles. Um, they've uh, provided more importance and thought into the exterior and aerodynamics as well to increase efficiencies because we know that Nissan's not the greatest sometimes in efficiencies and uh, nothing we get that. So um, it does look like what you see in these pictures and video is what's going to actually be built for this compact crossover. It's about the size range between a Nissan Rogue and a Nissan Rogue Sport, uh, somewhere in there, a couple inches wider and a few inches lower, basically. Um, again, it's a hot market, as I've said many times, that compact and midsize SUV is a super hot market. Also, that uh, I guess the thing to watch about on this concept is that this is kind of the new design direction for potentially as many as a half a dozen other uh, electrified vehicles that Nissan plans to come to market with in this decade um, and globally as well and be based on the same underpinning. So this, this platform is what they're going to use to build more. Um, no other specs, pricing, anything like that. You know, some again, it looks looks gorgeous. It's a nice looking machine. Again, it's conceptual. So let's wait and see what actually hits the market. They're saying that what you see is pretty well what you get. I'll believe it when I see it, of course. Uh, and that uh, it's, it's supposed to go on sale in the second half of next year of 2021. So let's see what happens. If that's the case, we'll start seeing uh, you know pre production models come around and hit the hit the later part of the year car shows, or most definitely next year the early car shows as they make their uh, circuit swing. Good to see that Nissan's trying to keep up with the uh, revolution and uh, let's continue to follow them. Talked about some of the other manufacturers over the last few shows with uh, Hyundai and uh, of course VW and all these others that are making huge investments and uh, Kia has come up with an announcement that they want to even further their investments in electrified vehicles and they're actually getting more specific now on their goals. It's not just a lot of fluff that's being out there. Uh, they've put together something they call Plan S uh, which means shift. Um, it's not like Plan 9 from Outer Space, and people who watch sci-fi will understand my reference to that one. Uh, this Plan S is uh, spearheaded by a total investment of $25 billion with a B dollars um, by the end of 2025, so within the next five years, aimed at electrifying uh, their vehicles and diversifying into new mobility areas. Now, globally, they want to sell a million eco-friendly vehicles, so I'm breaking that. I'm saying that because it doesn't say electrified or it doesn't say all electric. It says eco-friendly and hybrids and plug-ins and full electric and fuel cells and all, all this kind of stuff. They do say that half a million electric vehicles they want to sell annually by 2025. So let's say if, if the planets align and 2025 comes around vw says they want to kick out a million evs a year so we got vw kicking out a million we've got kia kicking out half a million we've got tesla probably kicking out half to three quarters of a million by that time maybe even pumping a million themselves um we've got all these other manufacturers ford and gm and stuff spooling up uh you know we we, we could see in 2025 you know, as much as I would say three to five million EVs uh, available to be built and, and sold in that year, which would be a, a, a substantial increase from what we're seeing now uh, from a globally, even potentially maybe six million. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But uh, that's all they say uh, about it. Not to whole mu much more. Uh, that's it. Good, good on Kia. And again, these announcements just help you know drive the industry and help give us hope that there is more coming. And the last story, which I found just uh, just before I went to uh, uh, to tape the show here today, um, very appealing. Um, I know that if you guys follow the U.S. and a lot of my viewers, probably the, the, the majority of my uh, largest part of my viewership is from the U.S., and I thank you very much for that. Um, but there is a campaign uh, ple uh, pledge that the Trump administration made during their campaign, which was about revival of the U.S. coal industry. And of course, EV activists and EV promoters and anybody who's, you know, looking at climate and the planet in general knows that coal isn't the greatest thing for us, right, as far as emissions and, and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I guess the good thing about that announcement is that it hasn't happened. In fact, the reverse has happened. Um, it looks like U.S. coal power plants have shut down at their second fastest rate ever in 2019. They said in 2019, 15.1 gigawatts of coal-fired electricity generation capacity 
was retired. It means went, went kaputs. That's the amount to power about 15 million U.S. homes. Um, the sources replacing this uh, is a big thumbs up. The Energy Information Administration in the U.S. or the EIA projects uh, or saying that the, this capacity is coming from wind, solar, and natural gas, and that it will continue to um, uh, to see another 5.77 gigawatts or 51% of uh, more coal being retired. Um, coal accounts for about one quarter of all the energy related carbon emissions in the U.S. And this is uh, according to the Union of Concerned Scientists. Uh, it's about 30% of U.S. electricity. So it's a pretty big uh, component. Um, so it's great to see that um, that is coming down. So we are seeing that shift to more sustainable, more green energy uh, uh, generations. And please don't start sending me comments about uh, climate change isn't real and I don't believe in, in cooling and warming and whatever you want to call what we're going through. Folks, we are definitely going through something. So we need to take measures to try to mitigate as much as possible what we're doing to the planet, whether it's just us, there's some sort of natural cycle or not. I believe it's human interaction. The rate of change, as I've mentioned on previous shows, from the last 150 years to now is substantially, quantifiably faster than it's ever been in the historical record going back millions of years. Even if we are in a cycle, this change is unprecedented. So believe what you want to believe, but um, whatever is causing what we're going through, call it climate change, call it whatever, take away what's what the name of that is, but we have to do something about it. And this is one way going electrified where it makes sense. So uh, good to see that they're cutting down on coal and I'll continue to monitor that. Right. And that's it for episode 76 of the EV Revolution show. Hey, you made it through. Thank you very much for sticking it out. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the video segment as well. Um, again, very important times. Thank you very much for watching, uh, for subscribing, for liking, for commenting on YouTube. It's very, very important for me. Uh, again, I want to. I tweeted tweeted it out earlier this week that I hit a milestone. I passed 10,000 subscribers, and uh, boy, just overjoyed with that. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that you do subscribe, and I do encourage that if you haven't subscribed, please do. It doesn't really take much effort. You don't have to click the bell to get notifications. You'll get an email or something maybe when I push a show up, but it'll be minimal bother, I promise. But it's very important from a YouTube metrics to have subscribers, and I do appreciate that. So thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. I also want to thank, as always, my Patreon supporters. I'm always very humbled by that. Um, had some uh, uh, conversations with one of them earlier this week. Thank you very much for reaching out. That's appreciated. Thank you again. If you're interested, you can check out my Patreon page, even a, a buck a month or you know whatever you want, a couple coffees a month. If you want to start with something, will help me to continue my efforts, uh, uh, the things that I have to do to keep this show going. Probably one of my last announcements because it's coming up in two weeks, fully charged live USA, Austin, Texas. Uh, from what I'm gathering, they've got a really, really good uh, uptake on registrations for this event. As I mentioned, uh, I'm, I'm going to have an exhibitor booth. I'll be out there. I'll be uh, mingling with some friends of mine from the UK, uh, L from Scotland uh, and Dieter from uh, actually Europe. Uh, who's taking over for Beth because she can't make it out and probably I'll see some other folks that we'll be hanging with as well. So it's going to be an exciting time. I'm looking forward to seeing my friends and colleagues again in this and uh, sharing some information and learning a lot because I know I will and talking to a lot of people. So if you are there, please come by my booth. Please hunt me down. Talk to me. Let's take a picture together. I want to hear your story. How are you doing? And let me know if you're a supporter because sometimes I don't, uh, you know, the names that people use uh, on uh, social media aren't their real names. So it's nice for you to identify yourselves and let me know. I really appreciate that. And Fully Charged Live 1st and 2nd February. If you haven't got your tickets, use this discount code. Get 15% off. It's going to be a great time. And I believe that's all I have for today in this episode. Again, I want to thank everybody for watching. Please keep the faith. This year, as I mentioned, is going to be a great year for EV growth. There's a lot of things happening, and it's an exciting time to be following that whole marketplace. Um, if you are interested in getting out, contact your local EV clubs or organizations. Uh, there's all kinds that are out there in your jurisdiction. If you're in the Caledon area, I'm having my first EVS uh, Society 
Cowling Chapter meeting on the 29th. You can check out www.evssociety.ca website for more info on all the chapters that they provide. So until next time, please, everybody stay safe. Keep warm as we're into the bowels of winter now. <laughs> Keep warm, rub those sticks together, and I'll see you when I see you. All right. Bye-bye.